Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brent Pasquinelli, and I'm proud to be a Vietnam veteran. Would, would, would all of you please rise for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation by Colonel John Trout. Let us pray. Eternal God, we gather here seeking your blessing. Open to each one of us the deeper meanings of this moment, moment which honors those who answered our nation's call to duty and support of the Vietnam War. Our gathering brings with it many different emotions, many different feelings and memories. So we give you thanks for our great nation and commonwealth, and for the freedom that too many take for granted. We ask your special blessing upon each one gathered here, and each one passing by in the next several days. May this wall serve as a time of healing for all. Keep strong within each one of us the desire to work for your shalom today and every day. Watch over all our veterans in recognition of their loyal service. Bless them with wholeness and love. Shelter them, comfort them. You have given us brave and loyal men and women who have steadfastly served in their chosen branch of our military. We acknowledge that their service enables us to walk as free men and women in this great land. Help us to honor our sons and daughters who have served or who are now serving. May each of our veterans feel honored, not just today, but every day. 
Protect them and their families. Grant them lives of joy and bounty. May their dedication and honor be remembered as a blessing from generation to generation. Now challenge us by our actions this day that we may always be reminded of your love and care for all of your creation, committing ourselves in the causes of justice, peace, and equality, and human dignity. And finally, we lift up all those affected by the mass shooting in Las Vegas. Bless each one. Amen. <laughs> Well, welcome and good evening. Certainly, please. It's a great privilege to be here to commemorate the sacrifices of those who have served our country and to thank the many families and friends who were touched by the Vietnam War and other conflicts. This event with the traveling wall is the capstone of what we envision and hope will be a healing experience. To begin, I would like to ask all veterans to please stand so we can thank you for your service. On behalf of Penn State and all of those who you have so ably protected, I offer my deepest appreciation for your courage, for your commitment and valor. Thank you so very much. It is fitting that we pay tribute to those who served in the military in this meaningful way. Penn Staters have bravely served in the military dating back to the Civil War and we have been recognized as a military-friendly school for as long as such recognitions have been offered. Penn State has the largest ROTC program of any non-military installation and military institution. And this semester, our joint service ROTC programs, including the Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines, welcomed more than 225 cadets to their almost 700 member cohort. These new cadets have joined a community of over 4,500 university-wide student veterans and hundreds of staff and faculty who have served their country in the armed forces. At Penn State, our commitment to military personnel is in our DNA, and we are proud to honor your service. In fact, next to Old Main is a Veterans Plaza, the 2011 Senior Class Gift. It honors the memory of Penn State's distinguished alumnus and Medal of Honor winner, Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy, and all those who have risked their lives in service to our country. 
It is a constant reminder of the toll of war, and it is a quiet place to pause and to reflect, rest, and to remember. We also recognize the heavy burden that the pace of military operations can place on families and on loved ones. We are working to support them as well through the Clearinghouse for Military Family Readiness, Military Appreciation Week, and other university services and, invent, and events such as the one today. We often speak of the Penn State family, and like all families, we share each other's joy and pain. Sometimes the best thing we can do is to simply be there for one another, because we know that together we're stronger, together we can endure, together we can celebrate, and together we can commemorate. When I look at the Vietnam veterans with those with us today and those commemorated on the Vietnam Memorial Wall, I'm inspired and I'm grateful. You answered our nation's call to duty and you have contribute, contributed immeasurably to strength and character of our great com country. You represent the very best of the United States of America and of Penn State. And again, I thank you deeply for your service. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Barron, for your kind and thoughtful remarks. What makes this evening so special is that I think we're literally surrounded by heroes this evening. This wall represents 58,000 that paid the ultimate sacrifice. But also, in this tent, I believe that most of us have been affected directly or indirectly by this conflict. We have all waited a long time To heal. And I want to take this opportunity to, from the, from the, from my soul, I want to take this opportunity to thank Penn State, because without Penn State, this event this evening would not be as effective or elaborate. Leadership starts at the top, and I want to thank Dr. Barron, I want to thank Dr., uh, I want to thank WPSU, the resources that they put behind this event in the last 14 months is truly impressive. I want to particularly thank Frank Christopher. Frank, stand up. Lindsay, I see you in the background. They are responsible for the local Pennsylvania documentary. If you haven't seen it, you must see it in conjunction with the Ken Burns series. All of this, all of these initiatives have helped us heal. The conversations that we've had, many of us, how about it, Vince, in the locker room? Many conversations that we've had in the past few weeks have all been very emotional, full of sometimes argument, conflict, but they all, I believe, have helped us heal. We have been waiting a long time for this event, and I want to welcome every veteran here, every Vietnam veteran, I want to welcome you home. Thank you very much. Speaking of the wall, there are 3,000 plus names on this wall from Pennsylvania. I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but the wall in Washington, D.C. features four to five million visitors on an annual basis. It's one of the top tourist sites in our nation's capital. It costs $9 million, totally volunteer effort, no government funds were used for this effort. And I think we're all very proud of that. A couple of very moving points is that the largest age demographic group 
on this wall is 19 years of age. Over 50% were below the age of 22. You should also know that the Defense Department is adding names on an annual basis. As it's determined, if it's a conflict-related disease that causes a death, uh, names are added annually. So the list is growing. <clears throat> so tonight we're joined by several prominent local officials. We have county commissioners. <clears throat> Michael Pipe, Mark Higgins, and Steve Dersham. We also have representatives here, Senator Corman and Tammy Ammerman representing Mike Hanna's office. We also have Congressman G.T. Thompson and Penny. At this time, I'd like to uh, call upon the commissioners and uh, Senator Corman and Representative Ammerman and GT and to uh, join us to lay a roof at the wall. Gold Star Mothers or Gold Star Families is a designation that I don't think anybody seeks. We have the honor of having a couple of families here this evening that represent Lance Corporal Arthur Mills, United States Marine Corps, month shy of his 19th birthday when he died in Quantry Province in April 1968. And we also have 
We're also here to honor Major Frederick Terry, his third tour in Vietnam when he lost his life. Also, if you'll see to the right, we have a table that represents some soldiers that aren't here this evening, but they're in our minds and spirit. That's our MIAs. We're honored to have two MIA families in Center County. We have the Myers family, State College, Gary Myers, Lieutenant David Myers, was shot down in 1967. Gary and his sons are here this evening, his wife Carol. Gary has spent the last 50 years in attempts to bring his brother home. We also have Debbie Berger, who represents the Lewis family. Major Lewis went down in 1968 in Laos, and efforts are still in place to bring closure and bring back his remains. So at this time, I would ask representatives from both families, along with the Gold Star families, to join us in laying a wreath in their memory. We'll now enjoy a rendition of God Bless America by the Glee Club.
really gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, introduce our next speaker. A little background. Captain McCombe was a Navy SEAL, served 26 years with distinction. He's one of our most distinguished local heroes. Anybody that knows Captain McCombe realizes the strength of character. He's a true American hero. But very few people know him because he doesn't walk around talking about it. Very low key, typical Navy SEAL, one of the best. For those of you that don't know it, I recently had the opportunity of reading a book that Dave Bauer gave me by Honor Bound, and it's written by two of his classmates, two of his team members, both of which won the Medal of Honor. And Captain McCombie's in the book. And in fact, Captain McCombie nominated one of the Medal of Honor honorees with the award. If any of you have a chance to read that book, um, you'll come back to me and say, you know, he is really a hero. Some of the beach scenes, in, beach scenes described in that book are really riveting. So it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce Captain Ryan McCombie, Vietnam veteran. So, good, good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> Every time I think of Vietnam, I hear the genius of Robin Williams playing the irreverent disc jockey of the American Forces Radio. He really captured the dark humor and the great irony and cynicism of that war. Fifty years ago, 1967, was the summer of love. The Beatles were singing, all you need is love. The mamas and the papas dedicated to the one I love. People from all over the country traveled to a relatively run-down part of San Francisco called Haight-Ashbury. Here they played music, smoked pot, and made love. They loved each other, all races, all ethnicities, and all religions. There was a kindness, there was a gentleness, and there was love in the air. There was a revolution of thought, a revolution of morality, a revolution of culture. Everyone was welcome. Blacks, whites, Jews, Catholics, everybody was welcome. Everybody except for the men and women in uniform. The men who were drafted into the military and being sent to Vietnam over a half million at the height of the war were not welcome at Haight-Ashbury. They were not welcome on our college campuses. They were not welcome in our city parks. They were not welcome on our beaches. They were not welcome in very many places at all. During the summer of love, 3,000 of these outcasts were killed. During 1967, 68, and 69, over 40,000 were killed. Life magazine ran a centerfold each week with pictures of the week's dead, often over 250 per week. In all, 58,328 died and over 300,000 were wounded in this conflict that our government refused to call a war. Upon returning home, these draftees and, ref and volunteers were not welcome. Upon arriving at Travis Air Force Base or other ports of entry, the first matter of business was to get out of your uniform and into civilian clothes in order to avoid the confrontational mobs that hovered around these ports of entry. It's not that our fellow citizens threw tomatoes at us. It's not that they spit on us. 
It's not that they called us baby killers. And it's not even because we were not loved. It's because we were not welcome. We were not welcome in our country. We were not welcome in the country that we swore to protect. The people who were our brothers, our sisters, our classmates, our teammates, and friends not only rejected us, they reviled us. Now, 50 years since that summer of love, and as has been the case, and has been the ca this case since this country's very beginnings, our citizenry has grown, learned, and changed. Today, we welcome home again all our veterans, and we recognize the sacrifices they have made. This wall, this wall is more than a reminder of the ultimate sacrifice of 58,318 souls. It is an eternal reminder that our sons and our daughters who fight our wars are welcome and honored in our country, always. Will all the vets in the audience please stand up? Again. I know some of you are getting a little elderly, but come on, give me a break. Welcome home to all our veterans. Thank you for your service, and God bless you all. Captain, I know you got that speech off the internet. Tonight, we've selected 50 Vietnam veterans, and we're going to award them with a lapel pin, designating the 50th anniversary of the start of the Vietnam War. And you know what? They've been waiting out in the rain here for about 15 minutes. I tried to move the program on as quickly as possible, but we're ready.
on behalf of Penn State students, faculty, staff, and alumni, thank you and welcome home from your Penn State family. At the conclusion of the ceremony, please visit the hospitality tent to my left as you leave the ceremony so that we can present you with a Vietnam War 50th anniversary commemorative pin. Again, thank you to everyone for joining us at this healing event. Thank you. Try to speed it up before the fire marshal comes. Because <laughs> if code finds out about this, Tong Songer, where are you? Call code. <laughs> We should give this next group the Purple Heart for waiting out in the rain.
Dr. Barron and Molly Barron will present a reef now. Everyone, please remain standing for the retirement of colors and also the benediction. I'd like to close using part of a prayer that was at the dedication service of the Vietnam Memorial. November 13th, 1982, Chaplain Rabbi Arnold uh, Reznikoff. Help us, we pray. Make this the beginning of the time of healing that we all seek. Let this monument and this dedication forever remind us that we will come together to mourn our dead. We will come together to reach out to our wounded. We will come together to remember and honor our brave. It is a gift to serve God and one another. So let us now go forth, accepting the challenges to which you are called. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Rejoicing always in the blessings of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Comforter. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you grace. May God look upon you with countenance and kindness and give you peace. Amen.
I want to close this evening by uh, thanking everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, you have no idea if you look around this room uh, and you see the vets that have uh, come out this evening and their families, uh, you have no idea how uh, this makes us feel. And uh, I'm truly grateful for your presence and for those that, uh, that continue to think that patriotism is dead in this country, I wish they would all been here this evening. Uh, this is truly a remarkable display of patriotism and support. And on behalf of all Vietnam veterans, we're very grateful that you're here. And thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.